Let's explore Ubuntu and the GNOME desktop. This is the Ubuntu desktop. In the dock on the right side are your pinned apps, and to access all of the apps, click the Show Apps button at the bottom. You can also pin apps by dragging them in, or dragging them out. The next thing you'll notice is the top bar. On the left is the Activities button, which indicates which workspace you're in from a glance, and opens the Overview, which lets you see and switch between your workspaces and open apps. You can also open the Overview with a three-finger swipe up. In the center, you can see your date and time, which you can click on to show your notifications and events. On the right is the Quick Settings menu, which lets you quickly and easily change some settings, like Volume, Brightness, Power Options and Lock, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, Battery Modes, Nightlight, Dark Style, and Airplane Mode. You can also launch the Settings app, and the Screenshot tool. To quickly switch between apps, you can enter the Overview, which shows you all open apps, or you can use Alt-Tab to quickly switch. In Ubuntu, you do have traditional minimize and maximize buttons, but this is not how you're supposed to use GNOME. To properly use GNOME, you should drag the window to the top to maximize it, and drag it back to restore it. And to minimize, you should just drag the window to another workspace, and then fetch it later when you need it again. But in Ubuntu, you still have the traditional minimize and maximize buttons, if you want them. Ubuntu also has great tiling abilities. You can drag to the top to maximize, or hold for a few seconds to tile it to the top. You can tile it to the bottom, the sides, and the corners, which is pretty neat. Also, you can use F11, like in Windows, to full screen some apps. Like so. To take a screenshot or screencast, you can click the screenshot icon in the quick settings menu. You can also search for screenshot in the overview or you can press the print screen key on your keyboard. To install software, open the App Center, search for the app you want, and click Install. It's that simple. There we go. Now you can open the app, and here it is. To then uninstall an app, click the three dots, and click Uninstall. In the Ubuntu Software Center, you can also rate packages and software. And done. Also, tip, if you can't find the app you want, for example, software, then you can filter by Debian packages instead, and you may find it. You can also download deb installers on Ubuntu, like exe installers on Windows, but it is not the recommended way of installing software, unless it's the only option. To open a deb installer, you have to wait for it to download, and then just click on it, if you have the software app installed. If not, you can install software, or GNOME software, in the App Center, as a Debian package. You may come in contact with other installer formats as well, like RPM, which only works on Fedora, App Images, which you have to enable support for in the terminal to use, or the dreaded tar file, which, if an app you need only has a tar file, good luck, don't even bother. Check if it's available on the App Center or other sources like Flathub, though. Ubuntu ships with a file manager called Files, or Nautilus. Like most apps in Ubuntu, it's fast, simple, beautiful, and gets the job done. You can switch between list and good view with the view toggle button at the top, and next to it is a drop-down that lets you sort your files how you'd like. At the top of the window is the path bar, which lets you navigate up folders in the path, or you can edit the file path by clicking either on the empty space or the name of the current folder. On the left, you have quick access to your main folders, like Recents, Starred, Home, Documents, Downloads, Music, Pictures, Videos, and Trash. 
You can add folders to the sidebar as bookmarks, and if you right-click on them and click Remove from Bookmarks, you can easily remove them. USB drives you plug in will show up above. Like so. And at the bottom is the Other Locations tab, which shows you your hard drives and network devices. You can also connect to remote servers easily and list the remote servers you recently connected to in this drop-down. And you can click the help icon to list all supported protocols. The GNOME desktop has a robust search function that you can access by entering the overview and clicking the search bar. You don't even have to click, you can just start typing right away. So you can search for apps, files, new software, as you can see, settings as well, emojis, clocks, and more. You can even make quick calculations using the search bar, which is pretty neat. In the online accounts section and settings, you can connect your Google, Microsoft, WebDAV, and Nextcloud accounts to get access to your Google Drive, Microsoft OneDrive, and Nextcloud right in the sidebar in Nautilus. Other apps can also make use of this feature. You can also change the volume of individual apps by opening settings, going to sound, scrolling down a bit, and clicking on volume levels. Okay, this will wrap it up for this video, but let me know if I missed anything in the comments below, and I'll make a part two. Subscribe if you like my content, and join the Penguin Byte Discord community with the link in the description below. Thanks for watching, see you next time.